In case of a natural shear zone where the shear sense flips, that means where in conceptually we can think that the vertex of the displacement profile is lying, the shear strain should be ideally be zero. You can look at my previous lectures in this connection and you, this has been well explained that I have drawn tiny tangents and I have explained. And how to find out the shear strain from the field, we have to look at the small scale shear sense indicators and from there decipher the shear sense. So now in this connection, I am going to discuss about the two shear sense indicators SC fabric and the mineral fish and give some concept about I am trying to give some concept about how to find out the strain from them. So I am going to cover now mineral fish and the SC fabric. The mineral fish is basically any sheared mineral grain and which can be any mineral grain but classically they are the mica grains. They can have three kinds of geometries, a ductile sheared mineral grain, it can be lenticular or elliptical in geometry, it can be parallelogram shaped and it can be of sigmoid geometry. Lenticular and parallelogram are having a strong geometric connotation. We can find out definition of ellipse and parallelogram in the geometry. Whereas a sigmoid geometry, I do not see a clear cut unambiguous definition. Okay? And as per my drawing here, a top to right sense of shearing is indicated. If the mineral fish is under a top to the left sense of shearing or in other words, a top to the left sheared mineral fish will have this kind of geometry. If it is a mica grain, we know that 90 percent of the cases the mica grains in thin section if it is undeformed, it is rectangular in geometry. So it is easy to understand that this parallelogram geometry of the mica grain has been produced from this kind of shear. The mental model is that this orange rectangle is like the starting position as if and then we applied a shear keeping keep the bottom boundary static though we never know which boundary is actually slipping. So from the rectangle parallelogram is produced. Now this concept can be applied to find out the rotational strain. For example, here we can see this is the angle of rotation psi from the initial position to the final position and here this is the angle psi. So, if I get parallelogram shaped mineral fish or mica preferably mica fish in thin sections, in thin sections they are found in more abundance from the myelonites, then this shy can become a good example of measure of the shear strain. Now I come back to the mental model with the channel flow, Poissouli flow and the shear. Suppose this is the conceived velocity profile from field work. Now to get a double uh, to get a confirmation that exactly this has happened, what to do? We have we can take samples from the shear zone across the shear zone from these locations. We can take the samples by hammering oriented samples to be picked up and then we loop them under thin section. So what I expect is that where I am thinking that there is a vertex where the shear sense has flipped. These are the SC fabric in the field and I can find along this line the shear sense has flipped. So this sample should ideally give undeformed rock. Is it happening? We have to check in the field. We have to redo the field work if required. And as I go from this point towards this direction, the shear strain has to increase. So this means as if we are increasing thinking as we are going from this point towards that point, we will get parallelogram shaped mineral fish where the shy angle is increasing. And I can tell you this will probably be not found from the ductile shear zones. 
creates again a big question that what we are thinking in terms of Newtonian viscous fluid parabolic profile are we correct? Is the rock non-Newtonian fluid? Is, is it really true that a single lithology we are considering? What about if there are some strain partitioning, some part has undergone less deform, deformation, another part has undergone more deformation, the softer material has been deformed more, these questions come but it is a healthy sign of questioning and we can move forward with these questions. We can critically talk about the shear zone that from the theoretical curve and what we find in the field and the expectation of the shy angle progressively changing from here to here increasing is happening or not happening. So also along this line, along this direction if the samples are picked up, shy angle has to increase. What about at the vertex we are expecting undeformed grains? Undeformed grains how to understand under microscope? They will not give wavy extension, they will ex extend at a single position. We have standard idea about the deformed materials and the geometries, those geometries will also not be found in thin section. Is it because that? there is a Poissoli flow and the effectively this is the velocity profile or is it because of that that the rocks are harder suppose a different rock type is found a different rock type. So we have to check very carefully in the field. So with this parallelogram geometry we can make a good estimation but dealing with the lenticular geometry will not be so straightforward. Dealing with the sigmoid geometry of the mineral fish will also not be straightforward. Once the strain analysis purpose we are picking up the parallelogram we have to ensure that single mineral grains are defining this para parallelogram geometries. Bear in mind that such geometries can also be manifested either by single mineral or an aggregate of minerals. If it is an aggregate of mineral giving lenticular geometry, an aggregate giving parallelogram geometry or an aggregate giving overall a sigmoid geometry, then this will be more difficult to use. So not that we have pick up some sample, make thin section and start working with the parallelogram geometry, things will not be so simple. Regarding the parallelogram geometry and the strain analysis, there is a word of caution, I am going to explain it right now. So think about under thin section you are watching a parallelogram. See this is the problem with the beginners and that elementary problem I am discussing. This is a parallelogram geometry where is the shy angle. One answer will be you think that this is my mental model. This was like undeformed grain a rectangular one and this is the initial orientation of the line and this is the final orientation. So this is the shy giving some estimate of the grains strain. But the problem is if this is a parallelogram grain, parallelogram shaped grain, it is not that from a single rectangular position this has been sheared and attained its geometry. There is another possible orientation of a rectangle from where also this parallelogram can be produced. Here I have drawn the second possible orientation of the rectangle, you see this is a rectangle and if I give a shear like this keeping this boundary static then also the same parallelogram will be produced. So should I take this as shy angle? By the way what is the shear sense direction? So to resolve this you may think about it which rectangle I should think, which half arrow I should take. Should I take this half arrow? I can redraw. Should I take this half arrow for the parallelogram or if this is the given parallelogram should I take this as the half arrow that also becomes crucial. So to solve this problem basically look at the myelonitic foliation within the thin section and suppose this is the myelonitic foliation orientation within the thin section we can we have to choose the half arrow like this whereas here if this is the myelonitic orientation myelonitic foliations primary shear C plane whatever be the term we are using C plane or the primary shear plane or myelonitic foliation 
that has to be identified. If that one is identified along that the half arrow is to be given and then you think that from rectangle a parallelogram has come then you decide the psi angle based on that you keep on working. This is important. Once you see the parallelogram shaped grain in thin section sometimes the beginners commit a mistake. Suppose I draw this parallelogram shaped grain in an aggregate of minerals. I mean to say this is my observed parallelogram shaped grain, but there is another grain that has grown on this. There is another let us say rectangular grain that has grown on this. So, since this grain has cut across that grain, this grain has cut across that grain and grown over it. So, we are getting a apparent parallelogram geometry. Is this parallelogram indicating any ductile shear sense? The answer is no they are not ductile shear sense indicators. Do not pick up such parallelogram grains from the decussate texture. From thin section when you are watching under microscope it is a haphazard growth of the mineral. So, we have to exclude such parallelogram geometries in finding out the shear sense. So, knowledge of structural geology is required to do the strain analysis of shear zones. Whereas, in this lecture series I am talking only stress and strain and it is important to link with structural geology the stress and strain issues continuously. Otherwise, if I only talk about theory, only equations, it will be very difficult for students to link their common observation and the numericals. Okay. So, the parallelogram issue is covered. The problem with the lenticular geometry is that we do not know for sure how let us say a rectangular mica grain alters to an elliptical geometry. Exact mechanism is not understood, but it is assumed that during this say this kind of shearing the grain attain this geometry where these corners get dissolved and it goes away by pressure solution activities. Pressure solution activity will take these materials at the corner out leading to a lenticular geometry possibly such a thing has happened. So, in this case it becomes a bit difficult with certainty find out the amount of shear strain. Same problem with the sigmoid geometry. It is difficult to conceive from a rectangular grain or a grain with sharp straight boundaries that it shears and attains this kind of geometry. Particularly for the Newtonian viscous fluid rheology of the rock this becomes more difficult to explain. So, one of the ideas is that possibly it was a rectangular geometry and during shearing this corner was smoothened and that corner was smoothened. The common sense will say that. I am thinking from an initial circle that the bottom boundary is static, top boundary is moved and then a an ellipse is produced. More shearing is given then this ellipse is produced. Now, in this ellipse which is changing its geometry with time I can draw I can take this latest ellipse here I can draw the major axis call it let us say m and the minor axis as the n then we can define the aspect ratio r is equal to m divided by n and which is more than 1 and when we started basically it was m equal to n circle is a special kind of ellipse. Now, as we see in this kind of mental model and drawn with white chalk that r progressively increases with time if stress is ongoing and the elliptical grain increases its aspect ratio which is in this case also same as the ellipticity. So, tentatively I can say I get an ellipse like this elliptical grain this is the C plane orientation and I get another ellipse of this kind and this is the C plane orientation. This grain has got more aspect ratio than that grain. Therefore, this is more sheared. 
there is another thing what can be clearly be seen that if I draw the long axis, the long axis inclination is also changing with more and more shear. As more and more shear is happening, this angle is reducing. So, not only the aspect ratio or the ellipticity of the lenticular grain, but also its major axis orientation with respect to the primary shear C plane or the minoritic foliation or the primary shear plane or the C plane angle between that C plane and this axis is progressively reduced. So, that indicates more shearing probably. So, here it is less shear, higher angle and here it is a lower angle. So, it is more shear probably. So, this is one approach. We are now going to describe about the sigmoid uh, grains and the measurements and to comment tentatively that this grain is more shear. Sigmoid geometry is not well defined in geometry. Here we can define, we can call it if we want long axis, they say this length is m and we need another line perpendicular to it. So, that m divided by n we can do an aspect ratio of mineral fish we can comment. But the problem is if I draw a line perpendicular to this orange line, then its thickness actually varies within the mineral fish. So, we have to do, we have to constrain it further. So, it is my choice, it is a user's choice that I define, I will keep on thinking several lines perpendicular to the long axis and I will find out which line is having, having maximum length. Say I find this line is having maximum length and I call it as the n, n length. Then I can say m divided by n more than 1 in this case is indicating the aspect ratio of the mineral fish. Here definition of m is clear cut in some other papers some researchers might be using, might be defining n in a different way. And what is understood? As more and more shearing happens, I will apply a common sense. If more intense shearing has happened, this fish can look like this. So, what has happened? R will increase, the long axis length has increased, it has lengthened and here is a thinning has happened. So, R has increased further, one more thing has happened, the long axis angle the acute angle between the long axis and the primary shear plane has reduced. Mental model, we are expecting such a thing, this is sounding quite logical that this angle is reduced. So, this angle I can call theta, what I can say, if theta is progressively falling in various measurements, that will indicate a in an increasing strain situation probably. And if R is progressively increasing, that will increase indicate a progressive increase in shearing. Now, if I take this theta inclination of the mineral fish and the aspect ratio, they can be plotted in a graph and then some interesting things can be commented. What is that? Say I plot here the aspect ratio r and here theta as the inclination. So, as more and more strain happens, theta has to decrease, r has to increase. Theta has to decrease and r has to increase, something like this, this kind of plot is expected. So, if in a shear zone, I come back to the natural shear zone first, say this is happening. A portion of it indicating top to left sense of shear and a portion of it is indicating top to the right down sense of shear. Then I am thinking a mental model, this is the diagram velocity profile. Then I am thinking near the vertex the shear strain has to reduce and as I go from here to there, the shear strain has to increase. Suppose I have picked up samples in the field here, here and here. In oriented thin sections, I am measuring theta and r of each of these samples. Then if I am getting such a trend, say this is sample 1, this is sample 2 and sample 3, 1, 2 and 3, this probably indicates increase in strain. This point is clear cut probably, 
Mica's, if it is a mica grain, sigmoid mica, it can be notorious. It may not give the shear strain appropriately. So this theta r, this kind of pattern, please note that it is a probable indicator of changing shear strain. What is the reason we do not always consider this as a very good example of change in strain? There are two kinds of fabric we can think under micro scale. One is the strain sensitive fabric, another is the strain insensitive fabric. Strain sensitive fabrics are those as you apply shear it that keeps on rotating. So this angle gives an estimation of the shear. Strain insensitive fabrics are those it is having it, it might have rotated then it got locked more shear happening but this mica fish is not rotating further. So in that case it is in strain insensitive. So I have discussed about the lenticular geometry and I have discussed about the sigmoid geometry of the mineral fish. Let us look at now the parallelogram geometry and what can we comment. I earlier I said that we can work with the inclination of the parallelogram geometry. Now here are other details. Can we define an aspect ratio for this parallelogram geometry? We can draw a the long axis. So we call it the length is m long axis l dot a. Now I need its perpendicular to this long axis a length that can give some idea about the geometry. I can keep on drawing several such lines. and I can choose the maximum length. Where is the maximum length? The maximum length is found in case of two lines, two lines giving the maximum length and the same amount. This is one line and this is the other line both making 90 degree. So I can measure this length say n then we can say that m divided by n is the aspect ratio of the parallelogram geometry. This aspect ratio how it will evolve with time if more and more strain is applied. So I can draw a more strained parallelogram. I can see that this m has increased and what has happened? n has decreased. I can also draw n here. n has decreased. So just like in case of a lenticular fish, just like in case of a sigmoid mineral fish. Here in case of parallelogram fish this can indicate that the m by n equal to r this aspect ratio will progressively increase if it is a strain sensitive fabric and it will progressively increase if more and more strain stress is shear stress is applied on the grain subject to many many assumptions and I repeat better to go for KVN analysis for the shear, shear strain calculation rather than going for these mineral fish.